Hello you guys, uh, it's Jordan, I'm back again, and uh, this is for my six month on testosterone video. And um, I'm actually going to talk about transphobia in this video, but um, before I get to that, I just want to say just a little quick piece of advice for any of you who may be transitioning and watching this video or planning to transition. Please, like, savor every single milestone you get to. You know what I mean? Because I look back and I realize how far I've come with, like, being at six months on testosterone, all the changes, you know, it's like, it's really, it's like a transformation. But I feel like I wish I would have just appreciated all the little things and noticed all the little things, you know what I mean? And, like, I've been so focused on the destination that I haven't really been enjoying the journey. So obviously I have a lot more time on testosterone to go the rest of my life. But, like, that would just be a piece of advice for all of you guys. I mean, obviously I'm happy where I am. I just wish I could have appreciated everything a little bit more as it was happening. Because, obviously, like, as a transgendered individual, all of these changes are, like, little happy miracles that you've been waiting your whole life for. So, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, I feel like I've taken it for granted a little bit up until this one. So, that's just a quick, unrelated piece of advice I would give to anyone who is transitioning or planning to transition. Alright, so transphobia. Um, I feel like it boils down to like three kinds, okay? There's intentional transphobia, you know, those hurtful comments. Um, there's unintentional, and then there's ignorance, okay? So, and I have kind of a little story to share with all of them. Um, I personally haven't experienced a whole lot of transphobia during my transition. You know, my family has been pretty pretty accepting, my friends have been pretty accommodating, um, my teachers have all been great. Um, it's only really within the last like two to three months that I've experienced transphobia and it's been all three. So that's why I'm going to talk about it. Alright, so we'll start with intentional. Um, there's an individual who I will not name who was a... Well, okay, I had a mutual friend with this individual who was a guy, and we got into a pretty serious altercation, and I was considering fighting him, <laughs> like, you know, boom, 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 fighting, and, um, you know, this friend who had been respectful for, like, the year that I had known them, um, well, like, year and a half that I had known them, was, like, pretty much took his side and was all like, you're so silly thinking that you can be a cis male, you know what I mean? And like, just things like that. And if you think that you're going to find like a girl who's open-minded enough to date a tranny, like you're wrong, like, and all this stuff. And, you know, that cuts deep. I'm pretty sure anybody who's experienced like those direct personal comments knows what I'm talking about. It's like you, it would have been one thing if this individual, let's say, had targeted like my ego because I have an ego the size of Jupiter for sure. Like, and I will admit that. And the thing is, is that's, you know, not the best. That's a character flaw. You know what I mean? Like humility is a good thing and I don't have a whole lot of that. Um, and so if this person had targeted that, I mean, that would have hurt my feelings, but it would have had some validity, at least. But instead, they chose to target something that I can't change. It's not its not a character flaw. Being transgendered isn't a character flaw. And so, it was just really an interesting experience, because I hadn't really... I mean, I had dealt with homophobia when I felt that I identified as, like, you know, a gay lady. <laughs> which is just funny now. Um, which sucked. But, I mean, I think one of the reasons that it's so different is, you know, I obviously no longer feel like that was ever who I was. And so those comments, even though they were obviously with the intent to hurt, kind of rolled off my shoulders a little more than um, these transphobic comments. And the thing is, is this person, in a sense, apologized and asked me to forgive them. And I'm going to try, but unfortunately that's another character flaw. I'm not, I don't tend to be very forgiving. And the thing is, is I hear those same comments in my head all the time now. Whenever I'm feeling dysphoric, those comments come back. This person's voice with those comments. And that's why it's, it's uh, really unfortunate when someone decides to be intentionally transphobic. Because I feel like 
those comments are going to stick with me for a very long time. And I'm going to do everything, you know, in my power so that they don't. But, I mean, that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. So, this person just said, you know, I was just trying to hurt you. I didn't mean any of it. It doesn't matter when I'm dysphoric, you know, you've given me ammunition to where my little voice inside my head means all those dysphoric things, so, and all those transphobic things. So it's unfortunate, but, I mean, the only piece of advice I'd, I'd like, say about it is, you know, I'd say at least 50% of the time, the person probably actually isn't transphobic. They're upset with you about something else, and unfortunately, identifying as transgender is a pretty big target. It's easy to poke at and everything because... You know, it's a subject that's so wrought with insecurity. Like, you know, a lot of people target other people's insecurities to get under their skin. And unfortunately, when you're transgendered, a lot of transsexuals have a lot of insecurities. So it's really unfortunate that that individual decided to go that route. And I really hope that someday I will be able to no longer have those comments in with me. Um... So no, that was intentional. Like I said, my only advice is to maybe like not take them personally because the person is just using that because they know it's going to get to you. You know what I mean? And chances are that it's not true, what they're saying. Um, and trust me, I could take this guy in a fight. This, this, I could take this guy in a fight. I don't care. Cis male or it's not. No, I could take this guy in a fight. Um, all right, so that was intentional. Now we're going to talk about unintentional, and I have a personal story for this as well. So I was working like like last week or something like that, and um, an individual came in, and I was able to tell that this was a an individual who was biologically male, but um, dressed and or identified as female, and you know. I wanted to help this individual just because, I mean, both my, I'm sure my coworkers would have been very polite and everything. It's not that. It's just like, you know, I felt like I would be more sensitive to everything and just make sure it went smoothly and this individual had a positive experience at Cold Stone. Um, so I was helping them, helping them, helping them. And I was just trying not to use pronouns because, um, I felt like, you know, it was kind of a 50 50 chance as to whether or not this, ident this individual identified as a male to female transsexual or as a drag queen. And so I, I was just trying not to use pronouns because I didn't want to offend them either way. So I was assisting them, assisting them, assisting them, and then when I gave them their ice cream, I accidentally said, sir. And by the look on this individual's face, I could tell instantly that I had used the wrong pronoun. And I had not intentionally chosen to use that pronoun, it just slipped out. And so I just felt super bad. I had known everything that had happened. I had just, I had understood everything and I wanted to apologize. But then again, I didn't really want to draw more attention to everything because it was in a really crowded, um, like, you know, rush time. And so, and then she wanted to pay like with a card and then I, we're supposed to ID. And so I was like, do you have an ID on you? And she's like, you know, no, no, no. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I just felt super bad, and I was talking to one of my coworkers who I'm out to and everything, just being like, oh, I feel so bad, I feel so bad. And he was like, you know, yeah, I thought you of all people would have had that on lock. Not like, you know, you should have, like, like just, I should have, I should have. But my point is, is that was totally unintentional. And unfortunately, I could tell that I had really, like, like put her in an uncomfortable position, which I would never do intentionally. And so it just sort of got me thinking, like, you know, if if I get served somewhere and that person accidentally uses she, maybe they see the the look on my face and they're like, oh, crap, 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 you know, and it was totally unintentional to hurt me, which is totally the opposite of obviously my former acquaintance's uh, intention, which was totally to hurt me. And like, you know, what if that person who served me was transgendered too? And they were like, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap. So, I mean, just sometimes that stuff is totally unintentional, and, you know, I know me personally, I just overanalyze the rest of the day, like, you know, why didn't I pass, what am I doing, what am I wearing, like, what, what is not, you know, not happening for me right now, when sometimes it's unintentional, and just, you know, stuff happens, and she looked beautiful, she was gorgeous, it was not, like, you know what I mean, it was nothing to do with her, it was unfortunately a mess up on my part that I still feel really guilty about. So, 
we have unintentional, we have intentional, and then the third is ignorance. And exhibit A for ignorance is my girlfriend's new, or my new girlfriend's parents. Um, they thought that I was, like, a cis male for the first, like, month of our relationship. And they loved me. <laughs> Their mom, uh, um, Alexis's mom, uh, thought it was so cute that I always asked, like, what time did she want Alexis home? You know, they let me come over all the time. They let me stay over till, like, midnight. Um, me and the stepdad had a good repertoire thing going on. Um, me and the little brother had a good repertoire thing going on, and it was really great. Then, um, a nosy neighbor called Alexis's mom and was like, you know, is Alexis dating a girl and all this stuff, and I'm not sure what made her think that, but, um, then Alexis's mom confronted Alexis, and Alexis was like, well, Jordan identifies as a man and all this stuff, and they didn't really take it that well. Admittedly, her stepdad was better about it, like, her mom was screaming at her, screaming at her, screaming at her, and then after all that, her stepdad came into her room and was like, you know, I love you, Alexis, and, you know, we'll figure this out. So that's really nice. And he's, up until recently, he's been, uh, like, definitely really welcoming, you know what I mean? Like, still having that repertoire going on. Um, we were talking about shaving, like, I don't know, things have been pretty good with him for the most part. The mother, on the other hand, was, like, crying, saying Alexis ruined her Christmas because of all of this, um, like, I, I tried to call her and talk to her about it personally, uh, just trying to be an adult, and, and she's like, you lied to me for not telling me this, and all this stuff. Okay, first of all, one, I have all of Alexis's former boyfriends submitted a status update to you about their penis, because the only thing I didn't tell you was that I don't have a penis, and so... Were you aware, for sure, 100%, that all of Alexis's exes had a penis? No? Okay, well then, I don't know why I'm different. Two, Alexis's mom used to be like 300 pounds, and she never told me that. Is she lying by omission, or is her body none of my business? And if so, then my body is none of her business. And she was talking about how I'm hurting her daughter's chances of getting into the Air Force. One, don't ask, don't tell was repealed. Two, I'm going to get that name change and my gender markers change that we're going to legally be able to get married in California. So everything's going to say male, and I'm not hurting anyone's chances of getting into the Air Force. And just all this stuff. And then they started going to family counseling because Alexis is the reason that their relationship is crap. And her mom is basically psychotic, in my opinion. Um... But that's been super hard, and it's been, I, I don't get dysphoric too often, and I'm going to make another video about dysphoria pretty soon, but unfortunately, it's really been um, affecting me, because as I said, my family has been pretty good, my friends have been pretty good, the, this, unfortunately, Alexis's family has been the most difficult thing, most hateful, most transphobic, most ignorant situation I've had to deal with. But the thing is, is it is ignorance, and that's why there's that third category, because they aren't educated about the subject. I mean, when Alexis's mom talks about it, she's talking, I'm like, I feel like telling her, do you realize you're talking to another human being? Do you realize you're talking about who I am? Or, or do you realize you're talking about something that affects me directly? And you're talking to me, we're making eye contact, do you not, where, where is the human part of this? You know, she just has this wall of ignorance, this wall of how things should be and how Alexis and I are not fitting that. So, uh, that's something I'm currently going through and I mean, I'm going to just attempt to be as patient as possible because, you know, especially I know, I remember with my parents, it just took time for them to like, you know, wrap their head around everything. So, but I mean, so I've dealt with intentional, I've dealt with unintentional, and I've dealt with ignorance in the past two to three months. So I just wanted to kind of share my thoughts on all three. And, you know, if you were looking for a transitional update, I would just look at my five and a half month video because I talked a lot about changes in there. And in the past two weeks, you know, not a whole lot has changed since then. But thank you for listening to my ramble. I know 15 minutes is a long time, but, you know, I have three different kinds of transphobia to talk about. So...
Um, my next video will be about dysphoria, and then I'll probably make like, you know, the about me that I've been talking about, and get Alexis in one of these, and all that. So, uh, thank you guys for listening, thank you guys for subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff you guys do. Alright, I hope everyone has a great week. Adios amigos.